Since we first appeared on this planet, humans have been producing waste. At the start of the 21st century, most of the world's waste is still treated as it always has been, just thrown away, more often than not ending up as landfill. We can't go on like this, it's just not sustainable. Landfill is expensive, wasteful of natural resources and damaging to our environment. It produces significant amounts of greenhouse gases like methane. But it doesn't have to be this way. New technologies and approaches mean we can change the way we handle our waste. And that's good news, not just for us, but for the whole planet. If we don't change how we manage waste, we'll not meet tough new targets, such as those set out in the European Landfill Directive. Failure could lead to substantial fines, as much as an extra £100 every year for every household rates bill across the North West. The good news, though, is that waste doesn't have to be viewed as waste anymore. New technology means that waste can be treated as a valuable resource. As we'll see, instead of throwing it away, waste can be used to generate energy in new and innovative ways, which are sustainable and protect the environment. Northwest Region Waste Management Group is a collaboration of seven councils who have come together to uh, find a solution to the whole problem of waste within the region of the Northwest. In a global sense, waste is a really important issue. If we are going to live within what the planet can afford by the time there are nine billion of us in the year 2050, we've got to take resource efficiency seriously. The Three Hours campaign is being increasingly successful. Citizens are now reducing they are reusing and they're recycling. The trajectory in terms of improvement in Northern Ireland, particularly on the work that local authorities have done with their local communities to improve recycling, unmatched anywhere else in the United Kingdom. Great performance. We've got an enormous amount more to do. There's still a reliance on landfill in Northern Ireland. About two thirds of our waste still goes to landfill and that doesn't match up as well as it does to the rest of near Europe. If we don't try to reach the targets set by Europe, we would be faced with infraction fines that would be equal to half a million pounds per day to be fined from repairs. So after we've prevented waste, after we've recycled our socks off, there will always be a residue that we've got to do something else with. That thing is increasingly going to be recovering energy from it. We certainly would be seeking to have a final bidder by the early summer of 2011 and have the infrastructure in place by 2014. There's a whole range of ways of getting the energy value back out of our real residues. Everything from brewing the waste in an anaerobic digester through to using very high technology processes like gasification. The benefits of having of achieving the infrastructure project, we will have a cleaner, greener place to live. We will have avoided infraction fines of half a million pounds per day. We certainly won't be looking for the money to pay extra landfill tax and as a result, everybody will benefit. So what happens next? The three R's of reduce, reuse and recycle describe much of how we should handle our waste. Reduce the amount of waste we create in the first place. Reuse items as often as possible to put less strain on the world's finite resources. And recycle appropriate man-made and natural materials. There is also, however, a fourth R, recover, which means turning waste into a valuable resource such as energy. Finally, once all other options have been explored, waste which can't be recycled or recovered is disposed. This is what is known as the waste hierarchy model. In an ideal world, the vast majority of our waste should be recycled or recovered. Unfortunately, at present, we simply dump too much and don't reduce nearly enough. It's clear that a new approach is needed and the Northwest Region Waste Management Group has plans to transform what happens to our waste. Together, we can completely turn things around. So how do we reduce the amount of waste we produce? Well, when you go shopping, think before you buy. Look on the shelves for a reduced waste option. Avoid buying products with excessive or unnecessary packaging. For example, instead of packaged fruit and vegetables, buy loose produce. There's no need for every broccoli or cauliflower to be individually wrapped. 
Instead of buying coffee in a new glass or plastic jar, why not buy a refill and reuse existing jars? When you're buying items such as squash, fabric conditioner or liquid detergent, look out for concentrated versions which are made with less water and up to 50% less packaging. Your local butcher, baker and greengrocer can also supply all food packaging free. And don't forget to bring your own reusable carrier bags. Reducing waste is the first step to better waste management. The next is to reuse. Before you throw something into the bin, think about whether you or somebody else could reuse it. Donating clothes, toys, books, furniture, electrical goods and other unwanted items to charity not only reduces our waste burden, it's also beneficial for society. Don't forget you can also refill bottles, reuse bags and find new uses for all kinds of household items that you might ordinarily consider rubbish. Some plastic sweet tubs, for example, can now be reused to microwave or freeze food in. Reducing and reusing can make a big difference to the amount of waste we create, but there will still be waste left over. But the good news is that much of that waste can be recycled via your blue bin. So what exactly can go in? Paper and cardboard. The fibres in paper shorten every time it's recycled. So office paper and glossy magazines can be recycled into newsprint, which in turn can be reformed into toilet tissue. Plastic. Plastic food containers like milk cartons are made from virgin plastics. These can be recycled to form plastic laminates, which can then be used in a number of ways, such as the manufacture of thermal fleeces or carpets. Glass. We've been recycling glass for years. It's a durable product which can be melted down, reblown and reused over and over. It's best to sort glass into similar colours before it's reformed. Metal. Like glass, metals can be melted and reformed multiple times. A metal drinks can could end up being recycled for car production and the car could, in turn, be recycled and used to produce other food or drinks cans. Both ferrous and non-ferrous metals can be recycled. Food composting. Every year in the UK we throw away around 8 million tonnes of unused food, a habit which costs each family over £600. Much of that waste can be avoided by smarter shopping, but things such as eggshells, tea bags and banana skins are unavoidable. But instead of getting rid of them as landfill, we can turn them into compost or fertiliser with a range of valuable domestic and commercial uses. Recover. Instead of just landfilling black bin waste, the waste which can't be recycled, the Northwest Region Waste Management Group has a new solution. A solution that will recover more recyclables and transform much of the remaining waste into a renewable energy source. To achieve this, black bin waste will be taken first to a new facility where it will be separated and treated. This MBT plant, so called because it uses mechanical and biological treatment processes, uses technology which is already commonplace throughout Europe. As a result, only a small amount of unusable treated waste will need to be landfilled. MBT is a tried and tested technology which is used successfully throughout Europe. All the processes are carried out within enclosed units, so there are no problems with odours or dust. And the end result is a valuable, safe byproduct that can be used to produce energy which is classified as renewable. First, the lorries deliver their contents into the reception hall. The waste is gathered into large piles and loaded into a hopper which feeds a constantly moving conveyor. The mechanical part of the treatment happens next. The majority of the waste is still contained within bin bags. These are taken to a shredding chamber where they're opened. Recyclable material is removed using a variety of methods. Magnetic sorters, screen separators and optical separators divide the metals, paper and plastics from the other waste. This is only practical if householders continue to keep sorting as much of their recycling material as possible into their blue bins. The remaining coarse material is sorted again. A relatively small amount goes to landfill and the remainder, a fine fraction containing the major part of the organic materials, is suitable for conversion into an energy source, otherwise known as solid recovered fuel, or SRF for short. 
It's this SRF which is used to replace finite fossil fuels or to produce energy directly. But before it reaches that stage, the fine material must be treated biologically. Anaerobic digestion happens inside stainless steel or reinforced concrete vats. It uses microorganisms to break down organic material, creating a biogas that can be used as a substitute for fossil fuels. First, the mechanically recovered waste is mixed with water and then added in batches to the vats. Inside the sealed vat, a natural biological process occurs, leading to an increase in temperature which helps release methane gas from the material. Each batch takes approximately 30 days to complete, and as it matures, a new one is added. Mature batches are allowed to dry out, leaving a stable material which can be landfilled or turned into a useful, solid, recovered fuel. In-vessel composting, or bio-drying, is a natural biological process which takes place in a series of long concrete rooms, known as tunnels. The entire floor space, about 150 square metres, is covered to a height of up to 4 metres. The tunnel is then sealed at both ends. The tunnel has a perforated floor, allowing warm air driven by fans to circulate. Over the next two to three weeks, this warm air helps compost the material, releasing carbon dioxide and water vapour. This reduces the mass of the material by about 30%. The final product is a stable, compost-like material which can be easily landfilled or used as a fuel source. If it is landfilled, it will be much more environmentally friendly than untreated black bin waste because it takes up less space and is biologically stable, releasing less gas and liquid. It can also be used as a solid recovered fuel. Three common ways to recover energy from SRF are gasification, pyrolysis, or as a substitute fuel for kilns used in the production of cement. All three options are being considered by the Northwest Region Waste Management Group. Using gasification or pyrolysis to recover energy requires a new dedicated power plant. The plant will use solid recovered fuel produced by mechanical biological treatment. The fuel is fed into a reaction chamber where the process takes place. Gasification simply refers to the production of a gas under starved air conditions also known as substoiometric conditions. It means that less oxygen than normal is present in the reaction chamber. Pyrolysis means that during the reaction process, no air is present in the reaction chamber. The resulting reaction creates temperatures of over 700 degrees Celsius. The carbon and hydrogen content of the SRF is partly combusted and partly converted into a combustible gas. This gas can be used to generate electricity, which is then fed into the local grid. Ash and flue gases are also created. These byproducts are then further treated to ensure that they comply with strict European environmental standards. The flue gases are passed through a sophisticated filter system where they are cleaned and constantly controlled and monitored. The small amounts of fly ash are captured for landfill and the bottom ash is recycled for use in the construction industry. The Northwest Region Waste Management Group expects that in one year, residual black bin waste from the region will provide 60,000 tonnes of solid recovered fuel. Gasification or pyrolysis can use this fuel to generate 30 gigawatt hours of electricity, enough to power 6,000 homes for an entire year. This electricity has the added benefit that it will be classified as renewable energy. Cement production. Solid recovered fuel can be used as a replacement for fossil fuels in the production of cement. Cement production is a resource-hungry process with one tonne of fossil fuel required to produce just four tonnes of cement. This dependency on finite fossil fuels means that cement production is less sustainable and more expensive than it could be. Using solid recovered fuel instead provides a cleaner, more sustainable alternative which is better for the environment. With everyone's help and with new waste facilities, we believe we can revolutionise our approach to waste. We propose to recover a valuable resource, clean, green electricity, which will contribute to Northern Ireland's renewable energy targets, delivering a 21st century solution to an age-old problem.